when they landed, they landed where I had expected, down on the narrow tail of the island. All that stood between the Japanese and victory was a handful of poorly armed, planeless pilots, shipless sailors, and other inexperienced personnel. We were going to run into the enemy, and uh, we did. We, we started forward, and they were, they were shooting at us, and, and some of our guys were shooting. The men were just dropping out like flies, and when they did, they were invariably killed. The world outside did not know that any of this was happening. You have men who participated in the largest surrender in American military history end up engineering one of the greatest victories that really changed the course of the Pacific War. And then the Japs were ticked off, and they started beating the hell out of people. They didn't believe any of us would live to tell what horrible things they did. Thank God we have. You combine all of the news that's coming out of the Pacific, you have a nation that's outraged, and rightfully so. Prior to the Davao escape and the efforts of Ed Dias and his comrades, most Americans had thought of the war as something that was taking place over there. And this really brought the story home of what our troops were enduring. Dias felt guilty about leaving the other members of the escape party behind, but he understood his larger mission now. Someone had to tell the story of the escape and speak for the thousands of prisoners of war who had died at the hands of the Japanese or were being tortured in prison camps spread around the Pacific. I'm here today because I followed Colonel Dias out. To me, he was the greatest and most heroic soldier in the war. Thank you.